Hello and welcome to the video. I'm just going to have a, a look around the van. We've got a few little jobs to do. Just little things uh, here and there. Um, and uh, there's going to be uh, some uh, rust treatment done at some point. But today I just wanted to get a few, a few small jobs done. So I'm going to just take you around uh, the van and show you what I'm going to do. So the first job is to, to check the oil. Because uh, I haven't checked it for quite a little while. In fact I've never checked it since I bought the van. But um, you know, it's one of those things that uh, I should have done. Uh, but um, I've not actually topped the oil up since I bought the van, and that was probably, I don't know, you're going to scream at me, but that was about uh, sort of two, three years ago. So the problem is, is that the dipstick is right down here somewhere, so I've got to get my phone to try to lighten up. If you can see that or not, you can just about see the the handle there, just below the exhaust. Now it's a lot easier that it's a lot easier when um, there we go. There's the the dipstick there. So it's a lot easier when uh, we've got the front off. But um, well, I don't want to take the front off. It's a bit windy at the moment, and uh, I'm just not in the mood for being outside for very long. So we've got the, the dipstick out, I don't know if you can see that or not, I'll just try to put that there, whoops. So I'll give this a little bit of a wipe, because there's quite a lot of oil on there. Hmm, I'm not sure what this means, but uh, it looks a little bit on the full side. And you can see that, there we go. So, I'm all dripping oil everywhere. So, it looks like it doesn't need changing, I want to thought. I don't know. What do you think? It looks a bit gunky, actually. I don't know. But, uh, it's not really, to be honest with you, the van's not really been used an awful lot since I bought it. Um, you know, because I've, I've sort of learnt to drive a little bit in it and uh, that's about it really. So I'll give that a clean and try to get it put back in the engine, uh, which is a bit of a challenge, it's a bit like target practice. Anyway, that's one job done. So the next job is going to be looking at the piece of pipe that we found in the last video and trying to work out what it does. So we'll have a look at that. So when Patrick came the other day, um, we were putting the, I'll say a protection bar on, let's not call it a rhubarb because it sounds so ridiculous, but uh, yeah, we put the protection bar on and uh, this piece of pipe fell off. Now, I'm pretty convinced it actually goes onto, onto this here, and you see it, uh, I'll try to get a bit of light on that, it's very dark uh, this evening. Um, so you've got this outlet from, this is the, um, the blower, or the ventilator, uh, whatever you want to call it, which basically blows uh, hot or cold air into the cab. Uh, hot air is a bit of a joke to be honest, because uh, it's not really much of a thing that keeps you warm in the winter, um, in a plastic box which is the cab. Um, so yeah. So I think it might be an inlet pipe for the for that because these pipes here look like they they come from the engine to heat up something or other I would have thought um, but I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about so I'm, I'm assuming this is an inlet pipe because it doesn't go anywhere and I can't see anywhere where it goes in, in the back here you know I've had a good look and I can't I can't see anything where it slots into. Uh, yet it fell off towards the bottom of the the engine, so it might well have fallen off at some point and, and dropped down uh, and rested somewhere down towards the bottom of the engine and fell off when we decided to to shake the, the chassis a little bit by putting bolts into it. So yeah, I suppose that's what it is. If anybody else knows what it is, please leave a comment. So the next little job is to refuel. Um, because I was about running out of diesel, my uh, wife has been to, to get some fuel from the local garage. 
Uh, she even bought me a nice new jerry can, a nice red jerry can. So that's going to be the jerry can for Mega Bread Run. So the fuel goes in here, um, and the fuel tank is actually underneath the driver's seat. So the wheelie bins are always useful for some things. I haven't taken my tripod, I think we'll get rid of that. Stick that there and put it in the bin after. So the camera's resting on the wheelie bin. And now we've got to check. Oh, it's the wrong one, it's that one. We'll take this off. Um, boom, boom, boom. I'll stick that there for now. So I've succeeded in getting oil all over my jeans. So let me fuel. Away from here. Let's see if I get on with that. Litres is this? Could be about five. Yes, five litres. I think the tank is probably about 20, 20 litres, 25 litres. I've been talking about, about my bum, but uh, yeah, that's a good while to fill the tank up. I think you can do something like uh, 400 uh, kilometres on a full tank. So it's not, I don't know what's happened to it because it's not had any decent amount of fuel for a little while. Um, you can go off and read the uh, telephone directory while I refuel. Right, that's that. Let's get that back in there. I don't know which way it's supposed to go. That's it. And we turn that, and it's locked in. Oh. There we go, job done. So I'm going there, I'm getting uh, fuel everywhere and it's starting to rain. Uh, in fact, I planned on, on doing um, the rust treatment today because, according to the weather forecast, it was supposed to be fairly dry, but in fact, it's still wet. It's been raining much of the day. So I'll just venture out uh, to have a quick uh, look around and see if I can do a few bits and pieces. So, you see, I showed you this in the other video. That's one side of the the bar that um, basically supports this. So you've got the lock and you've got the actual front panel with two, two of the bolts I put in in the other video. Um, but you've got the same thing on the other side, but it's hidden by the soundproofing. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, we need to reconstruct the soundproofing. As Patrick pointed out in the last video, um, it seems to soak up water like a, a, a carpet, basically, because that's what it is. Um, so I've got to find some sort of solution to make uh, soundproofing that is waterproof and uh, can fit in in that place there and if it's waterproof then hopefully it won't cause these bars to rust so badly so yeah that's going to be a bit of a, a hassle but uh, I think I'll take them out remove them completely and use them as a template to to, to make something else um, possibly out of uh, you know, sticky aluminium stuff you can buy so I'm still thinking about what I, I can do to, to replace them so I don't think I'm going to put the same ones back in again because the you know it's I mean basically um, inside there you haven't really got a mud guard as you've probably seen in the previous videos um, when you see the, the engine uh, without the front panel on um, you know, you've got basically nothing to stop mud and stuff uh, going everywhere uh, it's basically soundproofing that um, acts as a, sort of like a wheel arch and on this side um, you've got the radiator, it's radiator just here so 
can't see anything through there but you can see the radiator there through the, the wheel arch basically there's a square cut into the soundproofing which uh, in fact it's not there but that's how it would look um, so anything I, I sort of make up need to have um, you know, basically uh, some grill uh, of some sort of mesh so the next job after that is to well apart from um, sort of basically using uh, a product to turn the rust into uh, a treatable metal uh, which I bought I bought two spray cans I bought a spray can of uh, sort of rust remover and a spray can of um, red primer so those will get done in the next coming days I'll attack them with a wire brush and then uh, give them a spray and see what happens so I need to treat these as well these brick protection bars <coughs> sorry for the wind uh, it's quite blowy uh, this evening um, yeah so and this side is the worst um, so each end basically um, and then the back here as well no, there's no cover and I'm going to use a, the top of a, a pot to replace the cover because I don't think you can buy them um, but it's going to be painted black all of this but before the winter sets in I'd like to at least get the the rust treated so in doing all these little, little jobs and little observations um, we've got a slight problem uh, when the van was jacked up to put the protection bar on the front well we let it down on top of a brick um, we had a brick either side of back wheels to stabilise things and I can't move that well I've only got crocs on but it's not going to move so what I'm going to do I'm going to have to back it up slightly without crashing into the wheelie bins so that I can get rid of that so I think we'll get that done so I'm interested to see if it's going to start up straight away no I think the battery is getting a bit flat by the sound of it. So there you go, slight miracle. So, what I'm going to do now is going to reverse the van. Oh, it smells a bit uh, smoky. Mm. So, I'm going to reverse the van. I'll try to skip that out the door. I wonder if that's going to be enough. Put that brake on. Neutral. There we go. Job done. So I'm going to just take it down the driveway a little bit, uh, check everything's okay because the van's not moved for a few weeks now. I think the last time we moved it was when I reversed uh, into the space, well towards the space at the side of the garage to see if we'd have enough room to, to fit the van down the side of the house. Um, and before that it hadn't moved since uh, well before the holidays so I like to sort of run it now and again. Now I've just refuelled we can you know, probably uh, be able to, to drive it quite well because uh, usually either the battery is a little bit flat or lately we've had a bit of a lack of fuel and uh, the strange thing is is that the, the fuel reading on the, the dashboard keeps changing either you've got uh, it's saying two bars or no fuel at all so if I do it some good to run it a little bit backwards and forwards uh, in the driveway so I'm going to stick the camera on top of the passenger seat, hopefully it won't fall off, or hopefully you won't fall off.
realise I've not driven it often enough and so unfortunately I'm still getting used to the, to the clutch bite on it on a crashing time car. So I've just been for a little bit of a run with my wife, um, just around the block and just up to, you can just see that up there, just beyond that gate there, went up to the top of that road. Um, I'm now convinced that the um, the pipe that we found that fell on the ground is the air inlet for the, the blower, uh, which wasn't there before. It's not much of an improvement, but the blower, so if we just have a look at that. So that's the blower on, but without the engine on, and it's it's not hot, but it's sort of warmish. It's not freezing cold anyway, considering it is pretty cold this evening. Um, and if we stick the engine on, I can actually feel that, that feels really warm. But yeah, it's an improvement, I'd say that. Because I've passed some winters going to school to go and get my daughter, sitting in here at uh, sort of 4.15 in the afternoon and feeling freezing cold because there's no insulation in here. But it's, it's nice that the heater actually works, even if the engine's on. Um, it does work a little bit without the engine on, so we'll switch that off. There we are, I'll switch the, that off as well in case, just in case. Um, we'll leave that where it is, I think. So yeah, um, there's no insulation here whatsoever. Um, it's just a single skin plastic um, behind that bar. And the same with the ceiling. It's not, I don't think it's fiberglass, I think it's actually PVC. I think one of the things I need to do is to put some sort of headliner in. And I'm not sure I'm going to do it really. I mean, I was thinking actually um, putting, well, putting in some aluminium facing the other way, so it's facing against the roof. You know, because when it's really hot, uh, you can feel it. When it's hot outside you can feel it through the plastic so we need something to repel the heat and also keep the heat in so probably the wrong way around I'm not sure but I know that uh, as it goes over 30 degrees here fairly regularly in the summer it's it's not very pleasant so I was thinking of probably putting that there and then putting some cork some sheets of cork in there and then something on top of that as a headliner of some sort whether we can attach a headliner using Velcro onto these bars and, and have it sort of like tensioned across so it's tight, so it's like a headliner, but it's attached by the uh, some some Velcro of some sort on these these bars. That might be another thing to do. But even so, if if we do that, I think with the cork and aluminium. Um, it might help to both deaden the noise and keep the cab, well, not toasty, but um, moderately warm. And I was thinking as well at some point, uh, these are all ideas I've got and something that, something that might happen in future videos and might not, but um, to put some lagging around these poles as well. I don't like the idea of hitting my head against one. Um, yeah, so that's a future, a future project. But for the minute, I think the next uh, video is going to be about uh, treating the rust uh, before it gets too cold. So, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully catch you in another video. Take care of yourselves. Bye.